Hello viewers, today uh, we will take a look uh, at these uh, internet uh, modems. Uh, back in the old days uh, you used these devices to connect uh, to the internet over your uh, telephone line. So all you had to do is uh, connect your uh, landline, your telephone line uh, here. Uh, then this serial connector is connected to your computer and you communicate uh, with this modem by that. Uh, this connector may seem like a LPT parallel port, but uh, it's uh, just a DB9 connector with uh, much more uh, signals, uh, which I take a look later. These devices are quite complicated because uh, it's, uh, it's basically a computer in a box. I guess uh, there's some microprocessor with uh, firmware and some analog front end. This one, this modem uh, has a very nice uh, manual on the bottom with some jumper settings here. Uh, because of the analog uh, front end, you could also listen uh, the dialing tone. So uh, this linear potentiometer is used to volume, set the volume of the speaker. So I guess I will find uh, some speaker inside. And this is pretty much everything. So let's take a look uh, inside these two devices. This one was uh, made by the US Robotics uh, by year 97. And this Shinefax modem uh, with uh, this standard doesn't have uh, much English letters. And I don't know from, from the sticker which year this was manufactured. But we will look at the chips inside and we will see the air. Now let's take a quick overview. Uh, there's nothing uh, on the back side. It seems like a usual two layer board. So uh, here are a few blocks uh, which immediately catch my eye. Uh, you can see uh, some RAM and EEPROM probably because of this sticker. I don't expect that there will be EEPROM. Yes, it's flash. So there is some program. Uh, this uh, most probably will be some RAM and uh, the wires are going that way. So my guess is uh, there are it seems like two processors. Uh, this one which has uh, this RAM and this one DSP from Texas Instruments is using this RAM. Uh, right now I don't know what is this chip and what this chip does. Here's the speaker and this is some RS-232 level converters I think. And this analog uh, front end seems uh, quite unusual because if you take a closer look there actually is some footprint for uh, SMD parts for some different analog front end I think but they didn't populate it these parts and they put another board on top of it so here's here are two connectors uh, which connects this uh, board. So one is here. Unfortunately they are soldered so I have to desolder them. And this is the this is the input part which is soldered here. I have to correct myself because uh, this is a four layer board. 
I was looking at uh, this dip switch uh, and here you can see that uh, there are some pull up resistors I think and you basically ground them uh, ground these uh, signals going to the dip switch and when I looked on the other side there are no traces and immediately I, I thought yes uh, this is for layer board uh, you can uh, say that because you can see these wires uh, which aren't connected to anything on this uh, layer or on the other so yeah, four, la four layers. Uh, when I take a look at the power, what's the power, power voltage of this? They don't say, but we can assume based on the input capacitors. Okay, so the caps are rated on f this, this one on it's 35 volt, uh, this one is 25 volts, so I guess you can power this uh, with 12 volts. So these chips uh, most probably are doing some uh, 5 volt to 12 volt RS232 conversion, but uh, not in the manner of uh, capacitor charge pump which which you use in these days but they use uh, directly the 12 volts uh, you are supplying in. So before I destroy this board completely by uh, desoldering uh, this uh, analog board uh, I would try to connect the voltage and see what this uh, board does. Even I may try to talk to this modem uh, with the AT command set so let's try that. They don't say uh, which pin uh, on the barrel connector has to be plus, but uh, here's the bridge rectifier, so I guess I won't damage it. So here we go, 12 volts on my power supply. So it's off. Here are the LEDs. Oh, let's try it. Let's try to reboot it. So let's take a look uh, what this LED means. So let's try power on it again. CS, MR, and yes, I have absolutely no idea what CS or MR means, but here's a uh, handy cheat sheet. So CS meant clear to send, then MR modem ready. So that's fine. And while I was uh, making this reduction for serial connector, I pressed the but this button by a mistake. And I have absolutely no idea what that tone does. And uh, I'm not able to turn that on again until I restart the board. And I have uh, absolutely no idea what this uh, tone or button does. Here it says uh, voice slash data. But I don't know what that noise means. Ah. After some time uh, I gave up uh, to connect uh, this uh, device to my computer because uh, first uh, it uh, seemed uh, firstly it seems that it would be easy just to connect uh, ground uh, RX uh, TX signals but it seems like uh, this uh, DB25 is much more complicated uh, at the modems because there are another signals like uh, clear to send, data set ready, uh, request to send and also uh, it's possible that uh, this serial line is synchronous so not sure if I would be able to run this 
so it would need a TX clock, RX clock. Yeah, it's it's really complicated without any knowledge uh, to just talk to this. Okay, so after some examination, I've discovered uh, the basic blocks uh, which are here. Um, I was a little bit wrong uh, about uh, this chip being a processor, but uh, I will get to that later. So uh, basically, the analog signal goes uh, from the analog modem part uh, to this chip, uh, which is 14-bit uh, ADC and DAC. Uh, it's communicating uh, by serial line uh, with this DSP and it's communicating even now when uh, nothing is happening. Here's the block diagram of the chip. You can see it has both ATC and DAC and also some filtering uh, which is probably used in this um, modem application. And also if I probe uh, the clock pin you can see some 700 kilohertz clock signal. So the data from the ADC are uh, computed in this uh, Texas Instruments DSP. I uh, wasn't lucky enough to find the data sheet, but uh, this chip does some heavy real-time number crunching, and it's using uh, these two static RAMs or probably static RAMs to do the computation. And also uh, this chip here, I was thinking is some kind of expander, but uh, this is ATC186, which is a 16-bit uh, processor from Intel. So uh, it's somehow communicating with this DSP. Uh, this chip uh, is using uh, these two RAMs and this flash. You can also see how the clock uh, is distributed uh, between those, these two chips. Uh, they are using the same uh, oscillator and uh, this is the clock going to the DSP and this is the clock going uh, to this Intel processor. And then this NEC chip uh, is uh, most probably some uh, I.O. expander so uh, because uh, I've seen some traces uh, going from these LEDs uh, from on the back side uh, to these pins and uh, you can also see some uh, address and data pins uh, going sorry and you can also see some address and data pins uh, from this uh, flash chip and this processor going inside these chips it's also possible that uh, this one has uh, some serial line uh, hardware in it because uh, the old processors have had only the memory bus and that's it. These two chips are some kind of glue logic. Uh, this is SN75C188. Uh, these two chips are the same. And they contain three NANDs and one inverter each. And this one, DS1489AM, uh, it's uh, some kind of uh, Schmidt trigger input uh, chip which is uh, converting uh, plus and minus uh, 15 volts from RS232 to 5 voltage logic levels. I was trying to break this connector and I've noticed that uh, they used some ferrite probably to lower the EMI on this connector. I've never seen anything but like this. It's a two-row connector and it's just a ferrite with a lot of holes in it. And this analog board uh, seems like uh, some improved uh, option because on the board itself uh, there is there are footprints uh, for analog uh, front end. There is the transformer Okay, it's a relay, but they uh, have decided uh, that they use another front end, which is connected uh, in this by which is connected by this connector on the input and this connector on the processor side. And this is just analog stuff. I am not sure if I can explain uh, how it works. Basically, there are are some filters and uh, 
and galvanic isolation and the relay which is uh, doing the connection the hooking on and off uh, to the phone line now let's move to the second modem uh, this one has similar interface uh, with LEDs and here you can see the similar dip switch to do some settings this is a shine fax modem it sounds pretty Chinese and it is so I'm not able to figure out uh, what's the year of production uh, this this old board uh, was uh, this old modem uh, was really uh, manufactured in 97 based on based on uh, this date stamp the board of the first modem was really manufactured uh, somewhere in uh, 95 to 97 here is a 97 timestamp and these memories have also 97 97 year and 21st week of the year and this modem also has similar interface with a switch Okay, so this modem seems like it's uh, a bit older based on the through hole parts. And we can see that yeah, this chip was manufactured 93. Yeah, this is the date code 93 also. So it's few years older, but totally different assembly option. And um, what's the most interesting is this second board, which can be disconnected without destruction. Okay, SMD parts. And unfortunately the internet uh, doesn't know the answer what this chip is, uh, so it's some kind of specialized processor. Uh, this would be RAM and one of these or both of these chips uh, are a DC and DAC. You can notice that uh, they use the same uh, oscillator frequency, so it has to do something with a 56k modulation speed on the phone line so I have tried to turn on uh, this board uh, like the board before but uh, it's getting some current but no LED is turned on so that's a little bit sad alright so here's uh, the analog uh, interface uh, this is the main uh, board uh, which does some uh, computation based on the analog signals and this part This part is interesting uh, because uh, this uh, this chip uh, ATC31 is the predecessor of X51 uh, Intel processor. So you immediately see that uh, this will be the flash. Uh, this one is 64 kilobytes flash and this is the static RAM memory. It has 32 kilobytes of RAM. It's quite a lot. So unfortunately I wasn't able to connect this modem to my computer. Uh, the things uh, not always uh, goes uh, the way you planned. So this wasn't the most interesting uh, retro teardown, but uh, it was a teardown. So please subscribe if you like to see more videos. Uh, it will motivate me to create more content. Uh, you can always thumb up this video and comment uh, down below. See you next time.